so this time when I began I had no clear idea in mind. So I did what I often do when inspiration doesn't come to mind easily. I went to a royalty-free image site and just typed in the word scenery. This is a vague enough word that I get a wide range of different images. I settled upon a beautiful image of a pile of frosty leaves in front of a mountain scene. And I figured the frosty leaves look like a nest. But a nest for what? A dragonling. Dragons are one of my favorite mythical creatures, second only to werewolves. Something about the whole treasure collecting the scales, the horns, and the fire breathing. Although this little critter of ours will be a frost breather. I began by drawing in the dragon. I used a cat as a reference as I wanted it to crouch in a similar manner. Plus traditionally the six-limbed dragons, that is those with two sets of limbs and a pair of wings, have more mammalian proportions with longer muscular legs and a thick trunk with a deep chest. Once I had the dragon's basic form, it was time to start on the nest. I drew in some individual leaves scattered about, before going in with a scattered brush to fill in the underlayers, with a dark layer at the base to fill in any gaps. Next up was the water, which I left as a single base colour for the time being, and the row of trees which were made up of a front layer with the shoreline and a rear layer to build up the density. After filling in the lower hills on the left, I used a gradient fill to fill in the sky. Then it was time to do the taller mountains. For this I used the colour picker to pick out the colours I needed and dab them in. Everything in the background I did with a soft brush to make them blurry and out of focus so that when the dragon was painted in it would stand out more. The last thing I did was the reflection in the water, which was made up of darker and lighter variants of the base colour dabbed in like with most of the other background details.
Now it was time to paint the dragon. I put in a temporary white background so it would be easier to see where I hadn't painted. I dotted in the scales which, though time consuming, was worth it as I could show volume with how I distributed the scales and where they curved outward or inward. I used a reference image of icicles for the back spikes and the horns. I painted the tail separately as it would be closer to the front of the painting. Then it was time for the final details like adding in the shadow underneath the dragon, some foliage over its feet and tail where it nestled into the nest, and using the overlay blend mode and color dodge to add in some highlights and change the hue around the head and tail. 
This was also to help the head stand out against the water behind, as well as make the colour scheme a bit more interesting. And with that, I was done. Let's have a look at the final piece. I now have a Discord server. Come and vibe, chat about art, stay in the know, and ask me anything related to art or commissions. You can find a link to it in the description below.